All right, so there's a lot of talk around like what bench angle will be best for training the upper packs versus the lower packs versus the middle packs. Today we're gonna go over not like a, a cheat sheet cookie cutter thing that says this angle is best for this muscle because the reality is that it depends, but we're gonna get into what it depends on because for some reason people don't really like to talk about what it depends on. So first things first, your individual anatomy, the angle of your sternum, the width of your rib cage, the amount of shoulder extension motion that you have in various planes that will all dictate basically what you need to look for to set this up. But we're gonna go over all that. So first things first is sternum angle. Uh, if I lied flat down on this bench, right, and I sort of came to the bottom and I said, okay, what does this do in terms of like, where's my sternum sitting? Where are my ribs sitting? I have a sternum angle that sits a little bit higher. My ribs naturally a little bit more flared, which is fine. But what that means is that when I'm in this sort of uh, flat bench position, that my arms in terms of the relative position, they're getting stretched. If I could just mimic this position when I sit up are actually getting stretched a little bit like this. Right, so this flat bench position would be a really good way to actually stretch those lower fibers. So I picture the lower pec fibers sort of coming down toward the nip or the bottom of the sternum. Those are gonna stretch most in this direction, right? So a lot of times like when you see someone lie down, all you really need to know is like, okay, what fibers are stretching most in that bottom position and then where are the arms directing out from there? So it's not necessarily like, okay, which fibers are sitting, you know, the highest or which fibers look like they're the most in line. It's just about sort of picturing like, okay, here's where they sort of insert onto the arm, which fibers are going to be most directly in line to actually move the arm out of that position. So generally speaking for me, the bottom most position and probably the first two or so inclines are going to be more of like a lower pec dominated thing. Cause again, just lie down let your arms come down a little bit narrow to your body and then press upward and notice that again, this angle, if I just keep my arm this way, if I can coordinate this, look at where that arm path actually ends up. Okay, so now let's just move this one up at a time or let's go two up at a time because one will be a little bit slow and painful to pay attention to. So if I move this up just a little bit and I lie back down, well now I'm thinking, okay, it's not as like stretching sort of up in this, in this direction like it was before. Now it's actually a little bit more uh, down and back directly. So if I get into this bottom position and I stretch my arms back, let's just figure out, okay, what does this actually stretch? This is now stretching much more backward as opposed to backward and upward. So this angle for me, because again, my sternum is a little bit tipped that way naturally, will be really, really good for the middle fibers, okay? The sternal fibers, if you wanna go there, the, uh, the inner fibers for the bros. Okay, you pull your arms down, you get that good stretch, figure out where the arm is, and then go back to that position. You'd be like, okay, where do I end up? Here's the pec that I end up squeezing. Look where that arm path is comes roughly to the middle where those sternal fibers would wanna pull my arm, right? So a lot of this goes, just comes down to like trial and error and being like, okay, where does the arm path go to? Like in what will stretch most in that position? And then where does it end up? So rather than saying, oh, the zero degree trains this muscle and everyone, the 15 degree trains this muscle and everyone, you know, you wanna actually lay the people down, look at the arm path, look at the angle, and then say, okay, you know, where does this person go with that? So if I move this a little bit higher for me, and we can all kind of guess what's going to happen here when I lay down. Okay. Here's where my arms will stretch. I come up, be like, okay, what would this, which pec would be stretched the most? The upper pec sort of coming down in this way. And keep in mind, I don't know if I demonstrated that with the other arm path, the one that's more directly back, those sternal fibers stretch the most in that more horizontal plane, whereas those lower fibers stretch a little bit sort of back and up. Okay. Middle, lower and then upper sort of down and back. Right, so when I lay here and I come directly to the top, right? Again, wherever my arms would be perpendicular to the floor, I'm gonna keep one of my arms there. Look at that arm angle. It's really, really nicely tracking with those upper pec fibers. So for me, it would basically be like, okay, first of all, obviously, what do I want out of the exercise? Because, you know, it may be different. Like I could want some of the middle and upper. I could want some of the middle and lower. I could want proportionately much more upper or much more lower. And that would change like how far into it I went. Because obviously it's sort of a sliding scale and, you know, it can change, especially from individual to individual to being a lot of all of the packs to like some of them to like a really, really more isolated portion, right? Because if I just took this one, for example, and I came to this point from here to roughly here, like right out of the bottom, all the pecs will pull the arm forward because they're all sort of running around the rib cage. But as soon as I get past that like tiny, tiny bottom point, now all of a sudden that lower pec wants to just pull me this way, right? So there's a little sort of help from the costal pec or the lower pec, but as soon as I bring my arm up an inch, it's now like, okay, where would my lower pec take me? 
it would take me down and across. My middle pec would take me sort of up and across that way, and my upper pec would be most directly involved to pressing directly upward. Now, a note on all pec pressing, keep the arms narrow, okay? I mentioned that they sort of stretch around the rib cage, the pecs do. <sighs> Their leverage is gonna be best optimized when your arms are a little bit tighter. You know, for someone like Jay Cutler, that may look like this because of how big his rib cage is and how big his muscles are and how much stuff gets in the way. Um, but for someone who's much more narrow, it may look like they're very, very tight to the sides. For me, I'm somewhere in between. This is kind of a comfortable narrow arm path for me. This would be more akin to like something like a delt, you know, an anterior delt biased movement, which would be a little bit wider. Of course, the pecs will still get some work there, but they have the most amount of mechanical leverage when the arms are a little bit tighter to the body. So again, regardless of which position you're in, keep the arms tight to the body. Um, again, measure the positions first. Don't just say, okay, this angle is this muscle, this angle is this muscle. You know, for me, it's like, look at this incline. This was like the highest that I went. And this is only about what, like 30 or so degrees, 40 or so degrees. If I went any higher than that, now I'm moving into territory where it's like, well, I can't really stretch my arms back at all, right? So I know that that middle fiber and that, and that lower fiber of the pec aren't gonna get that much stretch. I'll still have some stretch in that upper pec, but now to get all the way up here, I kind of have to come up and over my face, whereas uh, that, that upper pec, that clavicular pec, would pull me not as high as my face, but somewhere toward my chin, right? So if I laid here and I did this, you know, that arm path ends up somewhere here. So I have a lot of upper pec recruitment from here to probably here, but not so much in that sort of tail end of the range. And then if I went higher with that, you would see just, you know, that basically more exaggerated. So um, hopefully a lot of good little tidbits there for you. Um, but a lot of this stuff ultimately comes down to just knowing where the muscles stretch and where they contract. It's pretty much that simple. And then basically asking yourself, okay, is this loaded in this particular position? Because you could say, okay, well, you know, I'm getting into that clavicular fiber stretch position, but do I have much of a stretch in terms of like how much load is here versus here? Because in this position, it's like, yeah, I have a good amount of stretch uh, in, in this position, but it's highly likely that as soon as you come out of that, you know, now you have the most amount of weight or the most amount of loading at this point, right? Because this distance is greatest. And so this will be kind of where that upper pack press is harder and this will be where it's easier. But you wouldn't necessarily want it to be necessarily easier here. You would want it to be uh, you know, harder at the bottom and maybe lighter toward the top. So maybe that's where you compromise, change the angle, et cetera, change the loading parameter, whatever. So you know, some tangential stuff there toward the end, but hopefully again, uh, on the whole, that was pretty helpful. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and uh, I will get to them as soon as I can.